ちょっとポンポンポンだけ最後に置いてくるのね。<笑><笑>チーズ。先端からね。そう、そう、そうなんかまずい。うん。反対したいようだけど、なんかそう、ちょっとルールの。そう、反対だけど、ね、そう、ルールとね、ええ、そう。You're awake. I had March and Dan Hung stay by the express to keep an eye on things. It's almost time. She should be arriving any moment now. <sighs> I've only been gone, what, a few months? And the space station is already in this state? Welcome back, Herda. This is the true master of the space station. Genius Society number 83, Herda. At least give me a proper introduction. Genius Society number 83? Of all my outstanding achievements, that's what you want to mention? Xandar came up with a name. You think I like it? So, this little twerp has the Stellaron now? Huh. Hmm. I'll have to take a good look. Hmm. Truly amazing! I built a whole space station just to contain this unactivated Stellaron and keep the blue from disaster. Yet someone... Was able to achieve that with this little twerp's body? How did they do it? Moreover, the Stellaron is still very stable in his body. <gasps> You're right! This little one's body truly is strange. Uh, you can leave. I'm discussing science with. What, what's her face? Himiko? Science exists in objectivity. There's nothing to be secretive about. But as far as you're concerned, I think it would be better for you to listen in. After all, I have a lot of plans ahead involving you. Speaking of which, uh, Himiko? Can I bring him in for some research? That's not up to me to decide. You can ask him yourself. Study you, of course. Your body contains a Stellaron, which in some sense is no different than storing a bomb. Who knows what might happen? Maybe it'll blow you to bits someday. You should be grateful that this genius is willing to help you out. I still have some interest now, but once that's gone, I'm not studying you even if you beg me. I'm very interested now. So there's almost nothing I won't accommodate. A Stellaron in your body? How interesting is that? Be grateful that I'm offering to help you out. This is a service even the IPC can't buy. You understand now? Herda wants you to stay in her space station. Well, I'm going to have to modify your wording here. 
This little twerp can only stay temporarily until the research is done. Or maybe I'll lose interest halfway through and they can just beat it. And after that? <laughs> Not my problem. <sighs> you also have another option. The Astral Express. If you want, you can leave with us. The Express has its fair share of experiences with Stellarons. The thing you're worried about and the answers we're looking for are one and the same. Besides, we can come back any time to let Herda conduct her research. She's absolutely fascinated now. Hmm. Well, works for me. Keeps this subject fresh, too. And that way, I won't need to keep worrying about this little twerp all the time. <laughs> Perfect. would be to get on. You're not doing me that big of a favor by staying anyway. Just remember to come back often. Make an appointment in advance with Asta or Arlen so I can make time to study you. There's no need to rush into this, Herda. Asta's in the master control zone. Let's let him have a talk with Asta first and decide for himself. I'll be waiting for you on the platform. It's no hurry if you still have things to do or someone to see. Come find me when you've made your decision. It moved. What you're seeing is one of my remote-controlled puppets. They're all over the station. I just connect to one wherever I am needed. Enough chit-chat. I am working on a big project with a few colleagues. If we succeed, it will answer the ultimate question that's been puzzling us for thousands of amber eras. The truth about eons. Eons. Think about it. What mystical existences. Some eons used to be ordinary humans like you and me, but somehow they managed to obtain power beyond our imagination. They are mysterious, powerful, silent, and terrifying. It's hard to explain all the mysteries surrounding them. How were they created? 
Why were they created? What were they created for? Have you ever thought about these questions? Well, indeed, it's got nothing to do with you, but we need you. Give me some time. I'll make this worthwhile for you, too. The four geniuses of the society wrote a program together. You see the big machine in the office? That machine contains a universe, just like the universe we live in, but it's more streamlined and customized. I call it the metaverse. Oh, really? That's what my partner said as well. Fine. I am a team player. Then let's call it the simulated universe. Now go and experience it for yourself. I will guide you in the simulated universe to make sure nothing happens to you. I'll even give you a substantial reward. It's too late to repent. I told you I could fight. Watch this. Let's go. Better up. Clemency, never. My turn. <clears throat> Let's go. Too late to repent. Told you I could fight. Let's make it quick. You're annoying. You can't run. I've no interest in conflict. Let's go. Rules are made to be broken. Fighting is meaningless.
We need a strategy. <laughs> Move carefully. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Tough luck running into me. Gotta try hard sometimes. Watch this awesome move. <laughs> Let's make it quick. <laughs> try that again. Let's go. Try that again. Just a scratch. You can't run. I've no interest in conflict. Rules are made to be broken. Let's make it quick. Try hard sometimes. Watch this awesome move. You can't run. The truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break. Told you I could fight. Wanna go take some pictures? So, have you thought things through? Then come with me. They're looking dumbfounded. Yes, Pom Pom's talking to you. Himiko told Pom Pom about your situation. Now listen up. Pom Pom will only say this once. Pom Pom's sure there have been lots of people telling you how special you are lately. But this is the Astral Express. And everyone on here has their secrets. Since you chose to board, 
You can abide by the rules. You're not the only special one here. You'd best remember that. I'm Pom Pom, the conductor. Just come find me if you have any trouble. Here already? Hmm. I was just engaging in pleasantries. Pom Pom still needs to prepare for the express's warp jump. You can look around the place yourself. No matter where you go on this train, Pom Pom will always have my eyes on you. There seems to be the sound of electronic equipment. Hmm. Oh, it's you. The door is not locked. Come in. Can I help you? Feel free. This is open to everyone on the express. While many of the roads that Akivili traveled along no longer exist, I think it's still meaningful to record our adventures as current passengers of the Express. I enter the collected data into the Archives data bank. I try to catalog the people and places the Express encounters, and compare and contrast them with the existing records. Do you see the terminal over there? It can be used to view information already stored in the data bank. Do give it a go. The door is unlocked. Just one look should be fine, right? Make a choice I won't regret. Attention all passengers, attention all passengers. The express is about we will see. <sighs> you took long enough. But at least everyone's here now. He won't be here, so just leave him be. Oh yeah, take these. A tiny bonus from the conductor to the passenger. Think of it as an investment in your future growth. Okay, everyone, hurry up and find a place to sit down. Try not to be like March. Always running around the express like a headless chicken. Pom Pom's going to start the final preparations for the jump. Take the turning. 
universe. The Astral Express. Eons. Did I get dragged into a science fiction movie or something? The Stellaron thing in my body. Are you trying to catch the stars? <laughs> I've done stuff like that before. But... It wasn't stars for me, though. It was light. Just woke up after being rescued from the ice. I could see clusters of stars in front of me. I reached out for them automatically, but they turned out to be the carriage ceiling lights. The whole crew was watching me. It was pretty embarrassing. Uh-huh, like I was some kind of weird alien. I don't really blame them for being curious, though. They had no idea where I came from. You might not believe it, but before all this, I was stuck in a huge block of ice drifting through space. Himeko and Mr. Yang and... Who was it again? Anyway, they figured out a way to melt the ice and saved me. Who knows? I don't remember anything before that. Who I am? Where I'm from? My name? It's like everything was erased from my mind. March 7th was the day they found me, so it stuck. Ever since then, I've been hanging out on this train and following it to whatever destination it decides to stop at. I'm hoping that one day, I can find my past. Uh, what am I talking about this for? A <laughs> way to get everyone down, huh? It's fine. I was the one who brought it up. Uh... <laughs> Cheer up! It's not every day someone gets to ride on the Astral Express. Ah, here comes the conductor. The Express has reached a safe distance from the space station. We'll be jumping in about... ten minutes. Return to your seats, please. Both of you! Things could get bumpy! Uh, thanks, Pom Pom. But did you really have to come and remind me? I'm not a newbie, you know. Well, it wouldn't be necessary, but Miss March 7th likes to challenge herself. And falls over every time. That's just called never giving up. <laughs> Conductor, can I get a juice, please? Thank you! Uh, we're jumping in five minutes. You can have something to drink when it's... It's over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm thirsty. now hello 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 <clears throat> all passengers please return to your seat the train is about to make the jump hold on everyone I won't fall over I won't fall over five four three two All those millennia, is this what Eurelo 6 has become? Uh-huh, so that 
snowy planet is our destination this time? Yes. Looks like this trailblazing expedition won't be easy. Oh, spatial readout anomaly. Star rail stability is down to 12%. Schedule alteration. Seven day stop over time extended indefinitely. Indefinitely. Until the anomaly is removed. Take an ordinary train as an example. It's like the tracks up ahead have suddenly snapped, and the way forward leads straight into a collapsing abyss. The only sensible thing to do would be to break hard, right? If we try to force our way ahead, there could be a hefty price to pay. This again? Don't tell me. It's gotta be... The results of the preliminary analysis are here. The anomaly stems from a Stellaron, as always. Yes, just like the one that's been placed into your body. Don't worry, it's not the first time our route has been obstructed by a Stellaron. Stellarons are clouded in mystery. Even Herda isn't able to fully understand them but at least we know how to neutralize their influences. The only thing we can say for sure is that their arrival causes massive changes to civilizations and ecosystems. They also generate distortions in space, such as fragmentums. There must be an inextricable connection between the Stellaron we're dealing with here and Urielo 6 becoming a frozen planet. Our current theory is that Stellarons are seeds of disaster, planted by a certain eon throughout the universe. We can't continue to trailblaze without removing the source of the disaster. That we've got to get busy! I'd like to entrust this trailblazing expedition to March, Dan Hung, and you. The objective is clear. Find the Stellaron responsible for the disaster and the spatial distortions, and bring it back to the Express. We'll deal with the rest. Awesome! We get to work as a team again! Someone has to stay on the train or Pom Pom will get lonely. Not to mention, Nanook threw us a glance just now. If we're targeted by the Antimatter Legion, then things could go south fast. So it's still not our turn. I know you really want to go, but we should give the youngsters a chance to get out there on their own. It'll be a good opportunity for them to bond. March, if you two are ready, why not go and find Dan Hung? He's probably already started collating the ecological data and survey results for your Relo 6. It's always good to know more about the destination before you start a journey. Are you doing okay after your first jump? Dizziness or retching are normal reactions. You'll feel better once you get used to it. Hmm, so you have high compatibility with the Express. That's good. I went through the Express's database, and it seems the environment on Urelo 6 has undergone drastic changes in the past few centuries. It was not a frozen planet to begin with. He said so? Hmm. Considering the spatial obstacles that the Star Rail has encountered, it's highly possible. I've conducted a preliminary survey and found that there's one area with a relatively normal temperature on the surface of the planet. 
By normal, I mean a temperature that just about allows for human survival. If I had to choose a site for initial investigation on this trailblazing expedition, that would be it. As I expected, before you came, whenever March wanted to go anywhere, Himiko would make Mr. Yang and me go with her. And even after you arrived, I didn't suppose I'd be the one to be liberated of that duty. I assume the trailblazing objective this time is to find the Stellaron on Urelo 6 and dispel the effect it's exerting on the Star Rail. Right? I see. You should find March. I'll join you two once I'm ready. Did you talk to Don Hung? How'd it go? <sighs> That's our Don Hung. Always trying to look cool with his poker face. Don't mind him. Relax. Don Hung and I are experienced trailblazers. We got your back. Well, are you ready? When I first saw this planet, I thought a world covered in ice. Could it have something to do with my past? Now I can't stop thinking about it. Still, the ice that trapped me was six-phased ice. A very rare substance. I don't think you can find it on your average planet. Mm. To be honest, I think I'd be kind of annoyed if I found out this was my home world. It looks freezing. Pretty girls aren't frost resistant. What? Is there something on my face? Nah, I was just imagining all the fun we're gonna have here. <laughs> uh, I feel sorry for this world. First the Stellaron, and now you. All right, here comes the Urelo 6 Trailblaze team. Urelo 6, we're here. <sighs> there really is one big snowball. Hey, get your own metaphor. <sighs> Snow as far as the eye can see. Which direction should we take? Based on the coordinates, the target should be up ahead. And then what are we waiting for? Let's go! Hmm. Do you want to mention the time we smashed a hole through Taikian Stadium? Or shall I? <laughs> Please stop bringing that up. Let's just say that landings and crowds don't mix. Unless you enjoy trailblazing through two weeks of community service. Drop it! Remember, we should stay vigilant. We know very little about this world. Calm down. Between the three of us, nothing will stand in our way. I mean, come on. You've got a Stellaron in your body. I have my special six-phase dice powers. And Don Hung... Uh, he's got that mysterious past thing going for him. So if people start creating trouble for us, they're going to regret it. So how long does coffee catitis last? Let's go. Braving the unknown? That's the real spirit of trailblazing. Hmm. 
This place still hasn't been corroded. Yet fragmenta monsters have already... No more playing nice! You're not going anywhere! Who invited you? Who will it be? You couldn't have done it without me. No more playing nice. death. Holding your breath won't help. I got this, March. Uh, someone's got their head stuck in the sand, or the snow in this case. They just need a helping hand. Ouch! My fine fellow, was that really necessary? Is crawling around in the snow a crime these days? I mean, come on, surely. It doesn't warrant a spearing. But then again, how can I blame you? I mean, I caught you off guard. It, it had to happen. You could even say I deserved it, huh? Besides... I made a gallant group of new friends as a result. <laughs> Is Captain Jafard around? Uh, he, he's an old buddy of mine. Who? Wait, you're not Silvermane Guards? Well, why didn't you say so? Turns out we're on the same side after all. Pleasure to meet you. The name's Sampo Koski. Excellent, I'll remember the name. I never thought I'd run into friends from the same line of work out here in this frozen wasteland. <sighs> Business is bad these days, but... Fear not! Sampo Koski isn't interested in hoarding. There's more than enough treasure to go around, so let's get rich together. <laughs> Say, why don't we join forces? I have reliable intel the main strength of the Silvermane Guards is being deployed to the front line. This is a golden opportunity. Come now, friends. I can understand the mistrust, but there's no need for the charade. Then again, I know the rules. Vigilance is the name of the game in our profession. It's my fault for letting my enthusiasm and sincerity get the better of me. Anyway, a meeting like this has to have been written in the stars. Ask me anything you like. I won't skimp on the details. Still make it snappy. You're never more than ten feet from a Silvermane guard. Me? You guys scared me to death. There I was, looking for relics to sell, when all of a sudden you came stomping over. I thought the Silvermane guards were paying me a visit. Seriously, though? Try treading a little lighter next time, huh? If you run into the guards, they won't hide in a snowdrift, and you'll be in a cell before you know it. You really don't know? The Silvermane guards are Bellabog's soldiers, enforcers, and police. Let's just say they're not the most flexible of people. And they like paying visits to folks in our line of work? 
seems like you guys really are new to the business. <laughs> to be young and naive again. How about this? As a senior in the field, which I'm sure you don't mind me saying, I'll give you some free guidance. There are ways of doing things in this profession, and you better get familiar with them. Moving in the shadows, finding the goods, pricing your stock, hiding from the guards. There's an art to all of it. No need. Why don't you just take us to the city? We don't really know the way. The city? Already? They haven't even started trading yet. Well, showing you the way is easy enough, Missy, but... It would cost. But, but it would be my pleasure. Kindness is Sampo Kosky's middle name. Follow me, friends, and uh, keep quiet. We don't want to be spotted by the guards. So why were you hiding from the Silver Main guards? Yeah, we're just storing a few relics away from prying eyes. Nothing serious. If it weren't for the uncompromising nature of our civil service, there'd be no need for secrecy. So, where about you guys? Rule number seven, never leave a footprint. I have my own special technique called invisible snow walking. Helps me throw off pursuers in no, no time. Who are they? Uh... You remember the Silvermane guards I mentioned? That's them! Help me, old friends! I don't want to be caught! It's the suspect and his accomplices! Arrest them! It's now or never! Over to you, dear friends! Hey, where are you think you're... Dodge this! Scared yet? Who will it be? You're not going anywhere! Fighting is meaningless. The truth of life and death. This sanctuary is but a vision! Break! Scared yet? <laughs> My turn! Jepard Landau, captain of the Silver Main Guards, order you to relinquish your futile resistance. Ugh, that Sampo cheated us all. Wait till I get my hands on him. Suspect, relinquish your resistance. Oh, profound secrets of the stars. Uh, so I'm a criminal, huh? Uh, forget Sampo. Wait until I get my hands on you. Fighting is meaningless. Who invited you? <laughs> For glory! Uh. Uh, let me through! <laughs> no manners, huh? Our position is solid! <laughs> Turn. Gotta try hard sometime. Watch this awesome move. Uh. 
the truth of life and death. The sanctuary is but a vision. Break! Want to see what I can do? Dodge this! Scared yet? <laughs> this ends here! And the prime suspect? The one with the blue hair? Apologies, Captain. We lost him during the pursuit. We can't find his footprints. <sighs> no matter. We have his accomplices. He'll be close by, plotting his next move. Yeah, we'd never team up with someone like him. I'm not trying to talk our way out of this, but we're not friends with that scoundrel. Did you see how fast he ditched us? We rescued him from the snow out of the kindness of our hearts. We had no idea he might be using us to get past you. Are you really dumb enough to fall for his... I'm a captain, not an adjudication panel. As a Bellabog citizen, you have the right to defend yourself, but that can only take place under the scrutiny of the architects, not now. Take them away. But we're not from Bellabog! Silence! What kind of nonsense are you? As you were, we must not be tempted into careless judgment. Look at their relics. We've never excavated anything like them before. And I haven't seen anything similar in our museums. Exactly! Uh, and we even have photos! You've probably never seen what your planet looks like, right? I took this one. Behold, Yarilo 6! <laughs> you mean to say that this white ball that's here, <laughs> that's our home? How can that... Hmm. It is said that a long time ago, strange visitors from beyond the sky would visit us here. But that after the eternal freeze, the blizzards made passage impossible and Bellabog would cease to witness such arrivals. But these people are... This decision is beyond us. If what they say is true, then only the Supreme Guardian may decide their fate. Our job is to present them before her, nothing more. Outsiders, follow me. Bellabog lies beyond this blizzard. Welcome to Bellabog, the city of preservation. That's because you're in Bellabog, the last bastion of humanity. Last bastion? <laughs> 700 years ago, monsters from beyond the sky set the world ablaze. The land was turned to scorched earth, with raging infernos and billowing towers of smoke stretching beyond the horizon. In the midst of the conflict, the eternal freeze descended without warning. Suddenly, sweeping winds brought blizzards which buried the invading legion. Bellabog was all that remained. The steadfast architects built this city. Under the protection of Klepoth, the preservation, Bellabog remains forever warm in the face of unrelenting cold. He's sure saying some weird stuff. A marked change in tone. Sounds like he's quoting from a historical record. Uh-huh. So why is he telling us all this? 
you wanted to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 